Thirty years after the Civil War, the most basic rights of black Americans were effectively subverted. Determined to be heard, Wells carried her crusade to England. Her strategy was to mobilize moral as well as economic pressures abroad. She understood just how critical the English market was to Southern cotton. One newspaper made this comment, we're naturally loath to express any opinion upon the way in which our American neighbors manage their own affairs, but when ruffians take to skinning men alive, vivisecting them, burning them slowly to death, no decent man can resent the expressions of horror and indignation that burst from the lips of all observers. That's, uh, that's just one of the things the British newspapers were saying as a result of what Ida Wells was was reporting to the British. During two European tours, Wells met with every leader of public opinion she could find, from the Archbishop of Canterbury to the Duke of Argyle. Working through English and Scottish women reformers, she helped launch the London Anti-Lynching Committee, the first anti-lynching organization in the world. She had interviews with all of the leading newspapers, with people in Parliament, these interviews were written up, and she sent them back to the Memphis newspapers so they could see the nasty things being said about them. 